In other words, if this is illegal, so is this. Can't have it. You know, without that, for example, it might be, I might feel that there would be nothing in this to prevent those curves from joining. Why couldn't these pink curves join the line y equals x? You know, it's a solution. They just hitch a ride, as it were. The answer is they cannot do that because they have to just get asymptotic to it ever, ever closer. They can't join y equals x because at the point where they join, you'd have that situation. Now, why can't you have this? That's much more sophisticated than this, and the reason is because of something called the existence and uniqueness theorem. Uh, existence and uniqueness theorem. Which says, which says, which says that there's through a point x0, y0, that y prime equals f of x, y has only one and only one solution. One has one solution. In mathematics speak, that means at least one solution. It doesn't mean it has just one solution, OK? Uh, that's mathematical convention. It has one solution, at least one solution. But the killer is only one solution. That's what you have to say in mathematics if you want just one. One and only one solution through the point x0, y0. So uh, the fact that it has one, that's the existence part. The fact that it has only one is the uniqueness part of the theorem. Now, uh, like all good mathematical theorems, this one has, does have hypotheses. Uh, so this is not going to be a course, I warn you, those of you who are theoretically inclined, very rich in hypotheses. But uh, you do have to, the hypotheses for this one are that f of x, y, should be a continuous function. Now, you know, like polynomial signs, stuff like good, should be continuous near in the vicinity of that point. That guarantees existence, and what guarantees uniqueness is the hypothesis that you would not guess by yourself. Uh, neither would I. Uh, what guarantees the uniqueness is that also, its partial derivative with respect to y should be continuous. Should be continuous near x0, y0. Well, I have to make a decision. Uh, I don't. Uh, have time to talk about Euler's method. Uh, let me uh, refer you to the, there's one page of notes, and uh, I couldn't do any more than just repeat what's on those notes. So I'll trust you to read that. And instead, let me give you an example which will solidify these things in your mind a little bit. I think that's a better course. Uh, the example is not in the notes, and therefore, uh, remember, you heard it here first. Okay. So what's the example? It's uh... so. There's our differential equation. Now let's just solve it by separating variables. dy. Uh, can you do it in your head? dy over dx, put all the y's on the left, it will look like dy over 1 minus y. Put all the dx's on the left, so the dx here goes on, on the right, rather. That will be dx, and then the x goes down to the denominator, so now it looks like that. And uh, if I integrate both sides, I get the log of 1 minus y, I guess maybe with a, oh, I never bother with that, but you can. 
It should be absolute values, but it, all right, put an absolute value. <laughs> uh, plus uh, a constant. And now if I exponentiate both sides, the constant is positive. And, uh, so this is going to look like y, 1 minus y equals x. And the x constant will be e to the c1, and I'll just make that a new constant, cx. And now you can fuss. By letting c be negative, uh, that's why you can get rid of the absolute values. If you allow c to be, have negative values as well as positive values. Uh, let's write this in a more human form. So that's y is equal to 1 minus cx. Good. All right, let's just plot those. So these are the solutions. Pretty easy equation, pretty easy solution method. Just separation of variables. What do they look like? Well, these are all lines whose intercept is at 1. And they have any slope whatsoever. So these are the lines that look like that. OK, now let me ask existence and uniqueness. Existence. Through which points of the plane does a solution go? Answer. Through every point of the plane, through any point here, I can find one and only one of those lines, except for these stupid guys here on the stalk of the flower. Here, there is no, for each of these points, there is no existence. There is no solution to this differential equation which goes through any of these uh, wiggly points on the y-axis. With one exception, this point is oversupplied. At this point, it's not existence that fails, it's uniqueness that fails. No uniqueness. There are lots of things which go through here. Now, is that a violation of the existence and uniqueness theorem? It cannot be a violation because a theorem has no exceptions, otherwise it wouldn't be a theorem. So let's take a look. What's wrong? We thought we solved it, modulo putting the absolute value signs on the log. Uh, what's wrong? The answer, what's wrong is to use the theorem, you must write the differential equation in standard form, in the form, in that green form I gave you. Let's write the differential equation the way we were supposed to. It says dy dx equals 1 minus y divided by x. And now I see the right-hand side is not continuous, in fact, not even defined when x equals 0, when along the y-axis. And therefore, the existence and uniqueness is not guaranteed along the line x equals 0, the y-axis. And in fact, we see that it failed. Now, as a practical matter, it's the way existence and uniqueness fails in all ordinary life work with differential equations is not through sophisticated examples that mathematicians can construct, but normally because f of x, y will fail to be defined somewhere, and those will be the bad points. Thanks.